Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha the Preacher. Okay. Hey, let me close these windows. I guess I have to put the air on while I make this video. So I've been trying to make the long suffering video for a while. You know, um, you know how we're covering the fruits of the spirit this year. Those of you who have been following me for a while, we're covering the fruits of the spirit. Last year we did the Beatitudes. So right now we're talking about long suffering and I'm on a little bit of a road trip. I had to uh, fly out to Florida and um, because I had my car at um, airport parking. I had my car at airport parking for the last couple months. And because for a while there, I was considering, um, you know, trying to get my own place and stuff in Florida. And um, I think I'm going to have to let that go, having my own place in Florida. I think I may have to let that go for now, at least for now. You know, yeah. So, um, you know, when I say my own place, I mean like a nice place. Now, have I had my own place in Florida before? Yeah. You know, y'all know I used to live in the projects there and all of that. Um, and then once my divorce finalized and everything, then I was able to regain my life back. <laughs> you know, sometimes when a man, quote unquote, leave you, get rid of you, dispose of you, whatever, you know, uh, Sometimes, in some cases, my case as a stay-at-home wife and mom mostly, my lifestyle took a deep dive, a huge dive. At one point, I lived in a $500,000 home, and then I end up, after my husband left, in the projects. Well, before he left, I believe God knew what he was doing. He didn't tell me what was going on, but God knew what was going on, and that's why God had me to get a place in the projects so I could go where I could afford so that as he was leaving me you know he had somebody else in the background so as he was leaving me without telling me but see people forget that God is there God see and hear everything <laughs> so even though I may not see and hear everything God does and so God prepared me for when my husband left so that's why women we don't have to I'm not going to say we don't have to worry, you know, because we're going to consider stuff, think about stuff. But when you're obeying God as best you can where you stand, of course, none of us are perfect. I've never been perfect. I'm sure you've never been perfect. But some of us, we make more better choices in life than we do bad ones. And it is what it is. Do some people make more bad choices in life than good ones? Yes. But some of us, we make more good ones than bad ones. Have I made a lot of bad choices? Yeah. And do I have to suffer those consequences? Yeah. So, what I'm trying to say is, ladies, if you're a stay-at-home wife and mom, even if you're a stay-at-home mom and you're not legally married, to me, you're still a wife. To Dr. Alicia the Preacher, even if you're not legally married to somebody, if you're committed to one another, living together, especially if y'all go to the next level and actually have life insurance policies, purchase a home together, both your name is on the stuff. Even if you're not legally married, if you got all these things in place, boom. That's family. That's commitment. That's That counts to me. To me. Now, I know we live in a world who say none of that counts. Okay. I know people that's been married 20, 30 years and stuff and they don't even got it lined up like that. Their marriage don't even yield, you know, life insurance policies, actually buying a house, you know, having some stuff, generational wealth. So don't let a legal piece of paper, don't let a marriage certificate determine, determine the quality of spouse you are, the quality of spouse that you allow in your life. Just because you're not legally married to somebody, if they do all this stuff that you need, like life insurance policies, add your name on stuff, 
you know, make sure you're included on everything. Why do you care if you're legally married or not? Because the legal marriage part, all that's going to do is just when you're old, you'll be able to draw each other's pension. But nowadays, we got a pension. Ooh, go on. You'll be able to draw each other's um, Social Security. Well, usually the average person don't get a whole lot of Social Security, no way. The average person. So, a legal marriage certificate it may not be worth it for you. If the only thing you really hold on for at the end of the day is just a Social Security check and a pension. Because anything else in this world, you can gift to people. You can include them in Nowadays, they have uh, domestic partners. You can even have uh, medical insurance from your job for a domestic partner. You know? So I'm just saying, you know. But anyway, back to me. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about long suffering. Um, I don't have the scripture. It's out of Galatians. I want to say Galatians chapter 5. Galatians or Ephesians? Get over. Um, so, but either way, you know, I'm driving, so I'm just trying to improvise. I want to get this long suffering video out. Okay. So, to me, long suffering is for divine purposes, for divine reasons, for godly purposes. For the sake of the Creator, on His behalf, according to our agreement with Him, and however else you want to phrase it, um, we are assigned to certain people in our lives to make sure that um, you know to make sure that they're okay and that we're okay, and on our best day and on our worst day people we're supposed to be committed that's what long suffering is staying committed even in the face of challenges long suffering a lot of people today do not want to experience long suffering we live in a highly Cancel culture. Oh, you pissed me off? We're done. You're blocked. Whoa. That's it. We don't really give people an opportunity to have a healthy relationship with us. So, to me, your bloodline, your family bloodline, that's the perfect opportunity to practice long suffering. Because most of us are trained to stick by our family no matter what and stick it in. Now during this cult, uh, during this uh, cancer culture stage phase that we're in, we're taught by the world systems, even your own parents, siblings, cousins, all these people, Throw them away to dispose of them, get rid of them, block them, don't have nothing to do with them ever. You know, if y'all fall out. Well, then, how do you ever master long suffering? How do you ever master forgiveness? If you don't continually practice it. And. You know, the divine, he designed it where we have blood people that we can, you know, depend on for these type of lessons and grow the life. You know, even before we get out there and um, even before we get out in the world. And um, I hope this video is okay because I have that music playing kind of loud. And I don't want my video getting tagged. Mm. So, this video is about long suffering based on 
Galatians chapter 5. And um, again, like I was just saying, uh, we live in a highly canceled culture environment where anybody, you know, whether it's your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, anybody in your life, cut them off. Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. If you fall out. And, I, you know, I understand, because even in the Bible, when I read, you know, like, the story of Esau and Jacob, you know, when they had their little birthright conflict that included their parents, too, they end up separated for a very long time. So sometimes family members, blood family members, do have to separate, I guess, to keep the peace for a little while. Go, develop, and grow, and things like that. But they were still among family. Jacob was still among relatives. He married his own cousins. Two sister cousins he married. So again, long suffering. Long suffering really is like a family affair to me. Your family, your blood family are the people that we are to practice the fruits of the spirit with. And so if we get enough practice with our family, by the time we're in uh, relationships with an employer, by the time we're in a relationship with a spouse, by the time we're in relationships with our own children, you know, uh, we'll have experience with enduring, enduring the good days and the bad days with people. Now, some people will say, you know, well, that's toxic. You know, if you got family members, friends, employers, all these people, and they act enough, or they, you know, do this, say this, or blah, 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 that's toxic. You stay in that relationship. It's a, yeah, it's a possibility that if either you or the other people involved, because it's parents, brothers, whoever, you know, if you two aren't like Esau and Jacob, the situation was so heated that they needed to split for some years, like a couple of, well, a couple of decades or something. They were separated so long that they had wives and children that they had never met on each other's side before. But eventually, even Esau and Jacob reunited. And there was a lot of concern and hesitation with the reuniting. They didn't know if they were going to be killing each other. You know what I mean? They didn't know what was going to happen. But there was a time when Jacob had to leave his father-in-law and take his wives and all their staff, you know, concubines, slaves, people, workers, employers, employees, whatever, animals, whatever they could get. And if y'all remember Rachel, she even stole from her daddy. You know? <laughs> so, again, you know, he had to go back and reunite with his brother. So, even when we have family and friends, and in some cases even, you know, spouses, ex-spouses and stuff, sometimes reuniting is in order will have to come back together at some point for the sake of the family so that certain family inheritance and things can roll out and I know we live in a world where you know having family inheritance and stuff like that is not practiced like it used to be and that's a part of the problem the cancel culture cancels out generational wealth and inheritance and legacies from rolling from one generation to the next that's the greatest concern. Because again, we have to remember what happens in heaven happens on earth. Heaven and earth are like twins and they're supposed to like, you know, be parallel to one another. They run alongside each other parallel. So, yeah. The generations of the earth and the generations of the heavens work together 
the souls in heaven, those souls appear here on earth for a certain purpose, for a certain mission, for, you know, and we all have certain instructions to follow. And maintaining our bloodline, maintaining our spiritual line, our heavenly line, and our bloodline, maintaining these lines, you know, is our responsibility. It's our responsibility to do this. So I disagree with all this cancel culture stuff. Now, do some people have to separate sometimes in order to straighten out business? Yes. Sometimes we do have to separate, you know. But I believe there's always a time to reunite too. To make sure, again, like I said, I'm not being very repetitive. To make sure that certain kingdom, heavenly and earthly inheritance, grow a certain way. Now, only those of us who are committed to the kingdom understand this and are committed to it. You know, I don't care what my kids, grandkids, you know, parents, kind of stuff say or do. There's certain business that got to be handled. according to the word, according to heaven, according to earth, the laws that we are uh, subjected to and how we feel. I'm not going to say how we feel don't matter because I'm not that kind of person. How we feel do matter. But just because we're mad at somebody or just because, yeah, you're mad at somebody, it's not going to change the family's plans on a kingdom level. You know? So it's okay to be upset with people, but the generational wealth and the generational legacies and stuff still got to roll. Even if you're mad at somebody, you still got to make sure that the, the business is handled a certain way. A certain way. Even if you're mad. That's what we have to learn and get used to. Some of us are out here suffering for no good reason. Well, all we had to do is just fix things with our own blood and family. Just fix it. Fix it. You know, again, long suffering. Long suffering don't mean that you're just depressed and sad and unhappy all the time. It just means that being in this commitment requires a lot of focus. It requires a lot of um, adjustments. Staying on that job for 30 and 40 years to get a pension, to get a 401k. It takes a lot of focus to do that. It may break people's hearts along the way. Staying on one job for that long, it has good and bad to it. Good and bad. Staying on one job for 30 and 40 years is good and bad. Everything in life has good and bad. And that's why long suffering is important. Unless you get through the bad parts too, along with the good parts, you know, it's not called long suffering. It's not called endurance. You know, people want to enjoy the good parts of life all day long, all night long. But when come when it comes to the challenges, you can't take it. Them out. Yeah. So long suffering. The ability to endure not only the good days but the bad days within your family on your job within your marriages almost all relationships you're gonna have to hang in there 
Gang in there. Yeah. Now, does everything have an expiration date? Yes, it does. Everything has an expiration date. So we know, even though we're hanging in here, in different relationships, different jobs, different situations, and whatnot, even though we're hanging in there and we're enduring and we're long-suffering, we're staying positive and committed on the best and worst days. You know, we know at some point it's still going to come to an end. So that's why it's good to have a plan, a beginning of something planned, an endurance plan, and an end plan. That's how I live my life. Anyone that know me will tell you that's how I am. I always consider the beginning, middle, and end of any relationship, any job, any situation in my life. I mean, it don't matter what it is. Everything has a beginning, middle, and an end point. No matter how much you love your spouse and how long y'all been together, at some point, your marriage is going to end. And through death, and through divorce, and through some kind of way. You count on it. <laughs> so when you have it, that kind of mindset, you know, we don't have to worry as much. Even though we gonna think about stuff, we gonna consider stuff, we gonna calculate, we gonna, you know, be on it. Can't nobody afford to not be on top of stuff. No one can afford not to handle their business. You know? But yet, because we know everything has a beginning, middle, and end, and because we can have some input, we can have some input, insight, you know, on how things go to a degree, you know, to a degree we do. Um, we don't have to worry as much. And that's one of the things that I've been learning. And I'm so thankful for my experience in Florida. My experiences in Florida for the past four years been like four years now. Because it was 2019 when I got my apartment when I first came to Florida and got an apartment 2019 20 one, two, so four years so in that four year period uh, God separated me pulled me out from my family from my bloodline pulled me out separated me and worked on me he worked on me during that time that was four years of healing I've gone through a four year healing process. Because before my ex husband walked out on me, God had already started preparing me. Because the ex didn't tell me he was going to leave me. Now, we had had a separation agreement in place some years before, but we had agreed to try to work things out. Well, while we were working things out, obviously he, had, he started a whole other relationship. Didn't tell me and walked out on me without preparing me, without saying, hey, I know we said we was going to work on this marriage, but I didn't met somebody else, and, you know, let's go ahead and get this separation, let's go and break up, let's get divorced. He didn't say that. And we had an open marriage, which would allow room for all of that. We had an open marriage. So there was no reason not to be able to communicate that. But God knew he was holding back. And God knew his plans, the excellence plans. And God knew how I was committed to what we were, what we had agreed to. So I was functioning in our agreement. You know what I mean? That's all I could do. And, um, but God prepared me. And I'm so thankful when I look back on how God prepared me for how I was dumped. Oh, Jesus. God prepared me for how I was dumped. You know, because I was dumped in a pretty, it was unnecessary how it happened. It was unnecessary. Now, to, to him, it was probably very necessary in his mind. But in my mind, it was just, it wasn't necessary. But God prepared me regardless. And he had a church family waiting on me. A whole church family. 
uh, before I met my church family, I had met my goddaughter. And I'm so thankful for her, my goddaughter. And I'm thankful for my church family in Florida. Although I'm not going to live in Florida anymore, you know, and I probably won't get to visit that much, but they'll still be my church family, you know. I probably won't, you know, get to see Pastor much, you know. And y'all know Pastor and I, we had considered each other. We had considered each other, uh, but we decided to, to pull back from it. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay. In fact, when you talk about long, now I'm going to stretch this video out a little longer and talk about how I'll just start well no I'll just do it in this video I'll do it in this video so this video is probably going to be chopped up it's going to be a chopped up video and that's fine <laughs> so I'm about to change the topic to how uh, so I'm changing it from long suffering I think I talked about that so now I'm going to change the video over to we're about to talk about um replacement flames replacement flames okay I haven't had a chance to talk about replace replacement flames the way I've wanted to now that I've talked about long suffering now I can talk about replacement flames okay all right so um, those who have those of you who have been following me you know that I was this last marriage was 25 years it was a 25 year marriage okay and it ended in divorce. Um, okay. He walked out on me without any warning. Okay, so I wasn't... In my mind, I wasn't prepared. But God had been preparing me. Okay, God had been preparing me to be walked on. He knew my husband was going to leave me like that. He knew it. So... Um, So, but because I didn't know the day or the hour, I didn't know the day or the hour that he was going to leave me. I didn't know. He didn't talk to me about it. He gave me no heads up. Just left me for somebody else. And is about to marry that person and be happy and stuff. So, and, um, and that's fine. But I do consider myself a flame. And he could have been a flame. Too. He could have been a flame, but if he wasn't my flame, then God sent a replacement. Whether he was or wasn't, whether he was or wasn't, God sent a replacement in the form of pastor. So when my husband walked out, I felt like, what? What? Huh? You know, like like you dropped the cake. You know what I mean? It's like just took the cake out the oven and you dropped it it's like oh my god you know what I mean so um so God put someone in place of the ex immediately so because I still had that wife energy on me I call it wife energy I still had wife energy on me and pastor he still had husband energy on him. Whatever kind of husband he was, his wife had passed. So as my husband was divorcing me, when Pastor and I had met, his wife had passed. Okay. So he still had husband energy. I still had wife energy. So God put us in the same vicinity so that we could finish out. Finish out what may have not been completed. So I'm so thankful that Pastor came, and I'm thankful that we gave it a try. You know, we were on each other's healing journey. And that's why I say, the person you heal with may not be the person that you stay with. Your healing partner may not be a life partner. So Pastor and I were each other's healing partners. His wife of over 30 some years had died and my husband of 25 years, or at that time it wasn't 25 years, but when he walked out 
it, by the time it was finalized and divorced, it had been 25 years. So yeah, so we both had that husband and wife energy on us real heavy and hot. So we were able to come in and in just three years, finish out what we needed to finish out. I needed to finish a breakup in a way that was healthy for me. And so, and what was so funny about it is pastor's life was similar to my life. There were a lot of similarities in his marriage to my marriage. So when I say I got to really finish out that marriage with a replacement person, with a replacement flame, you know, I was able to finish it out because it's not always the flesh and blood on the outside of a person, you know, that we're dealing with. We're dealing with life issues. We're dealing with inner issues and things. So sometimes God will switch people out so that you can finish. So pastor had to have certain things in his history experience in order for me to get to where I'm at, I am three years later. And whatever he went through in his marriage, men don't talk as much as women talk. You know, now I'm not going to say every man don't talk. I'm not going to say that. You know, and I'm not going to say every woman just, I'm not saying that. But in general, men don't express themselves to no end like women do. So, pastor has never said, you know what, you a flame and I'm a flame and I believe that, you know, my my wife passing and you coming in right immediately was my opportunity to finish out whatever she and I couldn't finish out. Whatever she and I didn't deal with or whatever, 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 we were able to do that. Because I really do believe that some of the stuff that I was saying in our relationship and bringing up, you know, they hadn't dealt with it in the same way. He was able to, again, see things from a whole different perspective, you know? So, and I believe he's complete and healed and is a better person because he met me. And I know that I'm healed, complete, and a better person because Pastor was there to help me finish out my assignment. Because, you know, chosen people, earth angels, healers, light workers, you know, whatever name you want to use, you know, we're here for a purpose. We're here on a mission. And sometimes God will switch people out in our lives so that we can, you know, complete the job, complete the job. So I'm thankful that I can see where God had already started preparing for me, preparing for my transition as my husband was secretly leaving me for somebody else. God was, he had me. And, and I'm thankful that he sent in a replacement immediately so I could finish out. Because again, we had agreed to separate in 2011, but yet continue to dwell together under a separation agreement so that all of our kids could grow up and, you know, launch a certain way. And it happened. We were successful in that regard, okay? Uh, were there damages on the back end, you know, for doing that? Yeah. Whenever you stay together for like 10 years, <laughs> at least 10 years, longer than you, you know, you know, longer than you really kind of need to, so to speak, for yourselves, but you're staying together for somebody else, you know what I'm saying? That, that sacrifice, you know, there's good and bad in it. I know we live in a world who say, don't ever stay together for the kids' sake. I know we live in a world that say that. 
cancel cancel culture stuff. Well, I did it. I don't regret it. Did it beat my ass down? Yeah, I did get my my ass beat down. Not physically, you know. I've no. Yeah, my my ex husband he never did anything crazy like that. But um, emotionally, spiritually, you know, just not getting my emotional needs met, my spiritual needs met. You know, the sexual needs were being met, thank God. You know, the sexual needs were in there. You know. <laughs> now, did I have tears in my eyes sometimes? Yes. I did cry during sex sometimes because, you know, when you know you're not committed to one another and you're bound to each other, like I was financially dependent on this person, just my husband, financially dependent. So I would cry because I know I'm making. I'm having sex with someone that's not committed to me and we're going to be broke up one day. So I would cry sometimes. But the, the sex itself was good. <laughs> you know, the sex itself was good. But sometimes, you know, when you know that that's all you're working with, I'm not going to get more than this really out of this. It can be sad. Especially when you love a person, you get along, we didn't cuss and fuss, argue and fight. We didn't act like that. I ain't act like that in the first marriage either. You know, so I was married twice for 32 years total. And we just, in neither situation, I never had to argue, fuss, and fight. Even with Pastor, we're not the argue, fuss, and fight type. Now, we're no longer, you know, considering each other like that no more. You know, uh, we, we did good. We did good. I'm so thankful. I was able to, we, we were able to end the relationship. Uh, on our own merit with an understanding um you know so like i said i'm down here you know driving my car back home and then in the future i'll just you know fly out rent a car visit you know go to my favorite vacation spots visit my church home you know a couple times a year that kind of thing so i'm thankful for pastor he was good to me he was he was so good to me we just couldn't get to that next level. You know what I mean? We just couldn't get there. <laughs> at least at least not in the time frame that I needed. <laughs> and that's okay. But we tried. You know, we tried. And I enjoyed preaching at the church. I enjoyed all of our trips. I enjoyed... I, we just enjoyed each other during our time of healing. But when it came down to being committed, because it's been like three years, you know, three years of seeing each other, knowing each other kind of thing. And uh, after about two or three years, you should know if you're going to be committed or not. You know, especially people in the ministry. We're in the ministry. So once we could clearly see that we're trying, but it ain't quite sticking, let it go. Pull it back. Pull it back. And it's okay to do that and remain friends. You know. I'm still friendly with my first husband. We're still friendly, but we're not like, you know, he's like a brother. You know, like a brother. We don't talk much or nothing like that. Hardly ever. Never see each other kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's rare. You know. Second husband, nothing. No contact. Nothing. So it feels good that Pastor and I were able to finish out the whole role. I got to act out my part, finish it out. And so in a way, it's like, yeah, ending things with Pastor is also symbolically of ending things with my ex in a healthier way. You know, because I just don't think it's necessary to just walk off of without some type of heads up. I mean, if you're not known for fighting, arguing, calling the police on each other and all that kind of crazy stuff like that, then I don't see why people need to just be abrupt and leave some other people hanging. I don't see why it's different. But we're all different. We're all different. We see things different. That's okay. So, yeah. I'm good, y'all. I'm good. I'm happier. Happier. <laughs> happier now am I claiming to just be so happy 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 I still got some room to you know 
develop happiness in. But I am happier than I was three years ago. I'm happier than I was, you know, I'm just happier. And I'm free and I had the opportunity to, I've had a good life. I've had some challenges in my life. You know, a couple of divorces. I experienced, you know, child molestation, that kind of stuff. So those are like horrible things. But at the end of the day though, despite the horrible things, you know, the reasons for divorce, being molested as a child, despite those horrible things, despite those horrible things, I have had a good life. A life of pleasure, a life of leisure, a life of fun, a life of academics, a life of work of all types. I mean, I've taught at a college and I've cleaned toilets. <laughs> I've cleaned toilets, I've, you know, for a dollar. You know what I mean? To make a dollar. I'll clean a toilet for a dollar. Why not? I'll teach at a university. I'll, I can be president. I can work on a land and a plant. I can you know, do whatever, teach at the pulpit, whatever I want. I've been all over the United States <laughs> and have done a lot of diff different stuff because I'm, I'm not too proud. I'm not too proud to be happy, sad, to love, to hate. I'm not too proud to do everything Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says that we're supposed to experience on this earth and in life. These are options. And I'm not too proud to be walked out on, dumped. I'm not too proud. I'm not too proud to love again, you know? And will I love again? Heck yeah, I'm gonna keep on loving. Yeah. I may not be legally married again no time soon. <laughs> if I, I, I really don't have a reason to get legally married no more. Just a regular husband to do. Just regular non-legal husband to work for me spiritual husbands you know natural husbands but legal I don't have to do that but I'm not against it I'm not against it but I've done it twice you know what I'm saying I've done it twice I'm 53 it's just not needed in my life but if something come up, I will consider it. Even like Pastor, you know, we considered it. We considered it. Pastor and I did consider marriage. We considered it. That's one of the reasons why I went back down this year. So that we could really give it a serious consideration. And we did. We did. But it just didn't stick. Oh, it just didn't stick. And that's okay. God is in control. He know what he's doing. You know what he's doing. And that's all right. God is good. You know what he's doing. And I'm so thankful for replacement flames. I know we talk about twin flames, but I believe that we're flames. We're just flames. And when we come together in a committed relationship, we can call ourselves twins if that's what we want to do. But we're just flames. And again, uh, there's multiple flames. Because you can have three people, four people, all in a relationship, all in a commitment. No different than family life. You know, you have your parents, you have siblings, you have grandparents, all these people live under one roof. That's a family commitment. It's called a family commitment. So you can also have multiple flame commitments. No different than a, the family you were born into. Multiple people under one roof all committed in different ways to one another. That's how uh, flames work in uh, relationships as well. Whether it's two people, three, four. So that's why I teach on my channel, the multiple flames. The replacement flames not just twins because we're all just flames 
And when you start putting twin, multiple replacement, those are descriptive words to just, you know, let you know what type of flame situation you're in. So, I'm a flame out here, y'all. And I'm just going to be doing multiple things. <laughs> I'm a flame doing multiple things. Hey. <laughs> I'm silly. <laughs> but yeah, most of us out here are. If you're not legally married to somebody, most of us are out here as single flames, solo flames, divorced flames, widowed, widower flames, you know, out here doing multiple things. Yep. As I look at it, I ran through a half a tank that way. Wow. So yeah, I'm gonna make a quick stop in Georgia uh, before I head all the way back to Michigan. But yeah, but I love, love, love Florida. I love Georgia. I just love the South. I've been in Tennessee and Kentucky and those are nice places too. But I like Georgia and Florida most. Georgia and Florida are my two go-to places. I tried to make these work in Georgia for a long time. Didn't. Tried to make these work in Florida for four years. <laughs> That's all right. Keep on moving. And I thank God for the people that I meet along the way. And I and I and I want to keep my pastor and my Florida family, church family. I'm gonna keep those people in my life. I may not see them much, but I will stay in touch. And they were good to me. Those people in Florida, my church family, were good to me. Pastor was good to me. Good to me. Even though we didn't make it to the marriage thing, you know, legal marriage, the legal marriage, we didn't make it that far. And um, and you know, because he's a pastor. And the community that he lives in, everything. I decided, since I didn't see the marriage thing happening, it don't make sense to live together. It don't make sense to do any of that at this point, you know. Because I, I believe he really, really, really wants a wife, you know. Uh, eventually, eventually. But, um, you know, and it's kind of weird talking about this, you know, but why not? You know, we're friends. We're friends. You know, ain't, ain't no love lost, so there's no reason to be shy about it. <laughs> I, 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 I am learning to love and enjoy. Well, how about this? I won't. It's too soon to say I'm learning. I'm setting myself up to enjoy being divorced, being solo, being a solo flame. I'm enjoying being a solo flame. You know, I, I, I want to keep on enjoying it. I want to fall in love with it, being a solo flame, just out here loving and healing. And as long as I don't expect um, legal marriage and being overly committed to people and stuff I believe I can still enjoy it I can enjoy it forever <laughs> I can enjoy it forever <laughs> as long as I can you know you know just don't over commit with people you know that over commitment stuff is for the birds over So it looks like these cars don't have no windows in them. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about replacement flame. And I believe that Pastor and I were replacement flames. Uh, his wife had passed. My husband walked out on me. And we both needed to heal in a divine way through God. And God allowed us to come in each other's space for the healing. And I think we're both doing good. I know he's doing really good. And I'm doing good, too. I'm doing good. You know, I'm thankful. 
and we stay and we get to stay friends. That is such a blessing. I'm thankful for that. The friendship part. And I'm glad we gave it a good go. I mean, when I say we gave it a good go, we gave it a good go, you know. But um, we just couldn't, at the end of the day, agree on some things. And those are, they were some important things. Very important. So, just couldn't really get past that. And that's okay. It's okay. That's why you gotta just kind of pull back. Pull back. Pull back. Let the air clear so that we both can move on. You know. But this whole thing about staying friends after a breakup, that's something that um, that I had to learn. I had to learn that. And in fact, my one friend in Georgia, he and I have known each other 11 years. And so um, that's a blessing. I have a friend in Georgia I've known for 11 years now. And we haven't really seen him much, seen each other much over the past few years. We haven't seen each other much at all because, I, again, I'm learning how to be friends when you're not in a committed relationship. I don't have a lot of experience with that. It's fairly new, and so my friend in Georgia is really, really one of the first, one of the first that I've had to practice with this with. You know, having a guy friend and even lady friends. Because I'm one of those people, I even struggle with having lady friends and guy friends when I'm in a committed relationship. It's a struggle for me. Yeah. Because I'm usually so... Well, you know, I was legally married for 32 years and I had ultimately four kids. Gave birth to two and adopted two. So I was busy. I really didn't have time to be friends with people. Because I was busy being a wife. Busy being a mother. When you're busy being a wife and mother, there's not a lot of room to do much else. <laughs> and so now that that part of my life is over, being a, a legal wife, and with my kids being grown, I don't have to attend to kids like that no more on that level. Because they've grown, they take care of themselves now. So, God is good. It's just me. And now I get to be a solo friend, a solo flame. And, you know, just travel around. You know, I, I got to work, you know, work and travel around. This is what I do. It's work and travel around. And this is not a bad way to live. It's not a bad way to live. And then, again, learn how to hold on to friends. Well, even if they're men I don't mind having men friends I'm at the point in my life I want to have men friends and women friends and it ain't even got to have nothing to do with no sex being committed over committed just simply being there for each other have each other's back so I think uh, you know I think this is my new life. Being a solo flame and just loving my family and my friends and see them when I see them. <laughs> Between working and traveling, I see them when I see them. You know, my family and friends, you know. Because I'm not overly committed to anybody at this point. I'm not overly committed. You know, I have a I've reestablished a relationship with my mom. I've reestablished a relationship with my daughters. I have a relationship with my grandkids. And now I have guy friends that love me. You know, guy friends that love me and are gonna be there for me. No matter who they with, no matter who I'm with, it don't matter. Friends with friends. Um, and I wanna be this way with women and men. So there's at least one woman that I want to be friends like that with, you know, where, you know, we friends no matter what's going on in our lives. And uh, so that's just one of the things that I didn't really get to do a whole lot of while I was a wife and mom 
maintain friendships with, with even with women. So I'm starting from scratch when it comes to friends. Uh, when it comes uh, when it comes to friends, I'm starting from scratch when it comes to men and women from scratch. Because I haven't maintained any relationships um, from childhood. Uh, it's my ex. I met him in ninth grade, so he was one of my best friends. My ex in 25 years. So when that ended, it was like my best friend is gone. My best friend and husband, all in one package, was gone. And I ended up losing the few other friends I had because they were attached to him too. They knew both of us. And they were equally close to him as me. To the point where I said, you know what? Y'all stay friends with him. I'm going to pull it back. Because he and I don't interact. And I don't want to hear his business. You know, I'm glad that he's with somebody else and happy and stuff. But I don't need to hear about it. <laughs> Unless he wants to have a cordial relationship with me, that's the only way I want to hear about him, just through him, because we're friends. I don't want to hear about him outside of him. And so far, everybody in his life, I have cut him off <laughs> so I can protect my energy in that way. You know what I mean? I'm still healing. Am I healed? Yes. Am I healed? Yes. But do I still need to keep on healing, keep on improving, keep on rebuilding myself? Yes, I do. That. I need to do that too. I sure do. I think somebody might have sent me a text message. So, but yeah. So that's where I'm at. That's where Dr. Leisha the Preacher is, y'all. She's solo. A solo flame, a solo divine flame, who may have had marriages with flames. Sometimes you, sometimes you may never know if a person's a flame or not, you know, unless they tell you. So I may have, may not have been married to other flames, you know, and I thank God that for a recent replacement flame, so that I could. Um, finish out my marriage the way I needed to finish it out and now I can stand here and be good and feel good and confident about being a solo flame again <laughs> because I, had, I hadn't been a solo flame in 32 years so I, I ain't remember what it was like I don't know what it's like to be solo <laughs> I'm clueless <laughs> out here, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, not clueless, because that was the key in opening up the marriage when we realized that we were but still going to stay together anyway. That's why we opened up the marriage, so that, you know. And I believe that was a good idea. Again, there's good and bad to everything. There's pros to it, and then there was cons to it, of course, good and bad. But I don't regret it because we both needed the experience. Because when you with one person for like, in our case, it was like 16, 17 years of just us, one on one. I ain't think about no other person, no other man, no other woman. I ain't think about nobody else for real. And then after all them years, you decide to open it up. You know, it, it takes patience. Long suffering. It takes some long suffering and some patience with one another. And I'm proud of myself because he was able to actually benefit from me opening up, well, us opening up the marriage. He actually benefited. He found his next wife. <laughs> he found his next wife during our open marriage. So I can't be mad about it, even though I may feel some kind of way. I may feel some kind of way 
because I feel that there was, you know, some betrayal there, some deception and betrayal there. While you're meeting someone new and falling in love, you're not telling me that you're ending it with me. You're not telling me that you're ending it with me. I'm thinking we're working on us. I'm thinking we're working on us while you're meeting someone new and falling in love and trying to get married. So that's the betrayal and the hurt. But I can't be mad because trust, if I could have pulled a marriage out of pastor, I would have. <laughs> I wanted another one too, sort of, sort of, you know what I mean? I mean, sort of. I'm thankful for what I got out of it. I don't feel cheated. I don't feel cheated. I'm thankful for what I got out of my relationship with Pastor. But, had I could have pulled a marriage out of it, yeah, yeah I would have. So that's why I can't be mad at my ex. Why would I be mad? A little hurt. Yeah, a little hurt for the betrayal. Yeah. Because this is the second time that's happened to me. That happened in my first marriage. The other one was right there, and he ended up marrying her. So, you know, it is what it is. It's happened to me twice. <laughs> that must it must be something about me, right? <laughs> it's something about me where men want to cheat and get their next wife while they're with me. Some about it, <laughs> but that's okay, because I was able to get my kids grown in the midst of all that craziness. I was able to get my kids grown. And now I'm solo and doing my thing. So I'm thankful. I can't complain too much longer. Now have I had some complaints? I've been on here crying. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on here crying <laughs> and stuff. But I can't complain too much longer because everybody's blessed, including me. Including me. Everybody's blessed. Everybody's doing what they want to do. You know, at the end of the day, as long as we can live with the consequences of our own choices, then all we can do is pray for the other people involved. Thank God that you can, you know, live with your own choices and then just pray for other people that they'll be all right too. That's really all we can do. I love road trips though, but I am getting too old to be riding around out here across the country by myself. So this is probably the very, very last time that I will do something like this, drive from like Florida to Michigan by myself. Although this time I won't be completely by myself. I'm out picking up somebody in Georgia and they're going to hang out with me for a minute and then come back but well yeah so but this is probably it this is my last jumping on the highway by myself <laughs> you know doing this kind of stuff so I think Michigan is home I accept it Michigan is home however I like to travel so I will hop on a plane and rent cars to do what I'm gonna do yeah I love a good road trip. No doubt about it. No doubt about that. But I'll, I'm going to do these road trips in the future with, you know, family and friends. That's what I'm going to do. So, yes, I'm excited about having new friends, male and female. Some friends will be non-sexual, and then I may have, you know, sexual friends. We'll see. <laughs> Some people can call me what they want to call me. I don't care. They can call me, hit the wall, ran through, gonna die alone, you know. Whatever they want to say, they can. <laughs> you know. I like my bed. If I die in my bed by myself, I'm okay. What's wrong with that? <laughs> you know? 
Well, most people, uh, I think most people, I think most, especially women, at least die with their family, you know, their kids, sisters, cousins, somebody there. And I think most men do too. Most men die with brothers, somebody around, you know. So no one dies alone just because they don't have a spouse. Just because you don't have a legal partner that's considered dying alone. No, I disagree with that. You know? Because you can have a spouse and be rushed to the uh, hospital and die at the hospital and your spouse is not standing right there looking at you holding your hand. That can happen. So, why be in a marriage for 40, 50 years with someone you don't really like and y'all don't get along you argue, fuss and fight, things like that just to avoid dying alone when you can after all those years of dealing with that type of situation can be rushed to the hospital and die alone at the hospital anyway I'm just saying although long suffering is good long suffering is good however you gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them and you gotta know when things expire you gotta know and uh, otherwise you have to live with the consequence of staying and enduring <laughs> staying and enduring living and arguing quote unquote toxic type lifestyle so at the end of the day we all have to choose for ourselves who we're going to keep around and for how long and why you know now are some people forever meaning that they'll be in your life until either of you die yeah thank god for those people whether it's your parents, siblings, cousins, best friends, a spouse. Having a legal spouse is not a bad thing. I'm not, you know, I did 32 years. So, yeah, I, I promote legal marriage. But at this phase of my life, I know, for me, you know, again, I'm not against that, though. But I, I don't benefit from legal marriage. Um, as I would solo. So, I'm gonna stay solo even though I'm older. I'm gonna do the best I can to maintain a certain lifestyle. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Thank the Lord I have the, the uh, opportunity, the ability, I guess you could say, to do it have the ability to do it so I'm very thankful all right guys so this video has been about um, long suffering was part one based on the fruits of the spirit in Galatians chapter 5 and then part two in this video the second part uh, which I think I'm gonna separate the videos um, has been about uh, flames solo flames replacement flames multi flames that kind of thing and I'm on here sharing my personal story my personal life <laughs> and people say why do you want to get on YouTube and tell all your business like that why not why not why not if I can explain some stuff in my life to help somebody else see what's going on in their life a little better shed some light on what they're going through so be it so be it and I thank the Lord to have something to talk about I thank the Lord for ever being married I thank the Lord for children I thank the Lord for all the jobs I've had and I've had a lot of them and I thank God for all of them because it all adds up to my social security anyway. <laughs> no matter what job you do, 
is going to help you with your social security when you're older. <laughs> For those of us who are concerned about stuff like that. Now, some of us, of you guys, not me, but some of you guys have plenty of money where, you know, having a social security check and pension and all that is no big deal. You got so much money in other investments and things. I'm not at that point in my life yet, so I want to be. So that's why I'm going to stay solo this time so that I can um, make those decisions and not have to discuss it with nobody else. Make my own financial decisions so that I can stay uh, above water ahead of the game. You know, now I'm just now, you know, coming from the bottom of the pool, you know, <laughs> and I was thrown in the deep end of the pool with no life support and stuff. And, um, so now I found my way back to the surface of the pool and now I gotta stay there. Stay there and be a blessing to my children and grandchildren, you know. Yeah. Yeah, God is so good. Well, thank you guys for listening to me, allowing me to share. And my channel is growing. I'm close to 400 um, uh, subscribers. Thank you, thank you. I'm so thankful for all of my almost 400 subscribers. I'm so thankful, each and every one. Now I know there's people on YouTube that got like 100,000 and a billion and all that, and that's exciting. <laughs> I may be that one day, but right now I got 400, and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you guys, trust and believe. And I like doing the short videos um, and I got a couple of short videos that got over a thousand views. I was like, okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, well, if you could click like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. And if you want to uh, hit me up on my um, email to discuss something, whether you want a reading or, you know, just have a discussion about anything I've talked about. Email me at Dr. Leisha, the preacher at gmail.com. And if you've been blessed by any of my messages, any of them, you know, and want to send a love offering, uh, my cash app is dollar sign Dr. Leisha, the preacher. All right, you guys be blessed. Love you.